Whether we like it or not, AI is sure to stay and we can either embrace it or we can fight against it. Something like herding cats or pushing water uphill. Pretty difficult to do. So in this video, I'm going to give you a selection of AI based tools that you probably have never heard of and you may want to check out. It's quite a diverse range, but let's crack on with the very, very first one. Now, if you like to use tools like Figma to mock up your designs, you're going to want to check out Wizard and get on the waiting list for their AI based design tool. Now, I don't have access to this. I'm still waiting for that, but I'll link to a video that I've taken a look at that shows off what you can do with this, which is incredibly exciting. Link is in the description, so check that out after you finish this video. But basically what Wizard has coming is the AI design tool or your design assistant. So what you can do with this is you can put a prompt in like you'd have with something like ChatGPT, and it will then create the design for you. But it won't just create a single mock-up design. It will actually create a flow. So if you're working on creating a mobile responsive design and you want to have the entire flow for this, you can use this to create that flow. You can also have it do full design so you can have all the images, the color palettes and everything in there as a great starting point. Or you can even use this to use low fidelity wireframe design mockups. Now on top of those wireframe designs and the high fidelity designs, if you don't like something, you can easily get it to prompt it to redo it, to change the style, the color scheme, all those different things. So if you want to prototype something super quickly and you're stuck for inspiration, then check out and get on the waiting list for Wizards AI Design Assistant. I think you're really going to like this one if you work with this kind of software. Now, next on our list is durable. There are going to be times where you want to create a simple landing page design for yourself or for a client. You don't necessarily need it to be totally original. You just want to knock it up really quickly, testing things out, getting proof of concept, those types of things. Durable gives you the ability to do that super quickly. All you need to do is click on the generate your website, click get started, and then you're going to put in what kind of business do you want to have. So let's just say we want this to be something like a car detailing company. We'll click on next and we'll call it Four Shiny Wheels. What an original name that is. Hit next and that's going to go ahead, create our color palette, pull in some images, create a starting point for us, and then put in some basic content, which we could then go ahead and edit if we want to. Now, this is just a free option. There is a paid plan, which I think starts at about $12 a month. I'm not affiliated to this in any way, shape or form but you can check it out if you want to take a look in a bit more detail. And that will give you more control over what you can edit, what you can do and how you can change things. There we go. After a few moments, you can see it set everything up and we can now go ahead and take a look at our website. And as you can see, this gives us a full website. We've got a hero section at the top. We've got images. We've got an about us, services, testimonials, gallery, even our location map and a contact form. And if you want to regenerate any of this, you can simply come over any of these sections, click on the regenerate section, and that will do, as its name suggests, it will regenerate what's in there. And there we go. That's generated it. Now, obviously, if you want to come in and customize this, you can click on the customize option and you can then sign up for a new account, at which point you can do unlimited regenerations and so on. Is this going to change the web design world? I don't think so right now, but this is early on in its development. And I think we're going to see a lot more of these types of tools coming to the forefront, especially when you combine them with tools like Figma for creating those mockups. And then you want to generate that. Framer is a good example of how you can do this. You can create your design and then you can output it as a fully featured website. However, I think with AI, with something like Wizard, I can see the natural progression there is going to be you'll create a mockup, you'll tweak it, and then you'll simply go ahead and output it as a mobile app or a website, whatever it is that you're going to create. Exciting times, but I do think you still need to have the creative aspect to put a human element in there. But sometimes you just want to knock things up quickly, get some inspiration. These are tools that help do just that. Now then, how many times have you been on a call with a client, you're frantically making notes, and then you find out afterwards when you're going to do the work, the project, the quote, whatever it is, that you've kind of forgotten some important information or you've made an incorrect note. Well, this is where TLDV may come in handy. What this allows you to do is basically run this, have your meetings recorded, and it will automatically transcribe the entire meeting for you after it's finished. So you'll have a full list by list of everything that was said inside that meeting without having to make a single note yourself. The cool thing is this integrates with both Google Meet and Zoom, two of probably the most popular tools out there for having meetings, whether that's collaboration meetings, group meetings or whatever. So it's pretty cool that you can use something like this. Now, there are free and pro plans, so you can check this out for yourself. You can see 
The free plan gives you unlimited recordings, but obviously it's going to give you a limitation in some respects. But if you were using this in a professional environment and you want to save yourself time, effort and headache of missing things out, I think $20 per month is a pretty good price just to make sure that you don't have any problems. Check out TLDV and take a look at what that could do for you to save you time and effort and headaches with meetings. Now sticking with that meetings and presentations and so on, beautiful.ai might be something you want to check out. If, like me, you kind of suck a little bit at doing presentations with slides and all those kind of things, or you just literally have no inkling to want to do it whatsoever, it's kind of boring, well, beautiful.ai could save the day for you. You can use this to create your whole template structure and have this create presentations for you. It's a pretty cool little way of working. So for example, you can see we can try some examples and this will go ahead and create example slides for us. And as you can see, it's a pretty nice looking slide. It's a good starting point. You want to do word clouds, names of the planets. We can click, we can have it generate something different. And you can see you could create things like this yourself, but the reality is something like this could make it so much quicker and easier. And you end up with great looking slides. Now, you don't have to use it in this way. Let's say, for example, you create white label training for your clients. You might create online courses any manner of different things. This could be used to create the slides that you want to have talking points, to have interim slides that kind of just emphasize a point, whatever you want to use them for. Beautiful.ai is pretty cool and pretty interesting if you have a need for this type of layout and design. From a pricing point of view, it starts at about $12 per month. And again, if you're using tools like this and you have a need for them, you kind of have to offset how much would it cost you per month to how much time would it take to actually go ahead and create these for yourself. I think $12 is probably about 10 minutes worth of work for most designers, if not less. And if that could save you several hours, I think $12, 12 bucks, 12 cents, whatever it is going to be, I think that's going to be absolutely incredible value for money. Anyway, check out beautiful.ai. Now, if you're like a lot of people and you need to give presentations, but you don't feel comfortable on camera, you may want to check out HeyGen. This is an avatar based AI tool that allows you to create great looking presentations. Sure, they're not as good as having a human giving this presentation in real time, actually saying what they want to say, but not everybody is comfortable doing that. Hey Jen is kind of like that middle ground. You can take a look at doing this yourself so you can try it out for free. And once you do, you'll see this gives you a kind of Canva-esque layout. You've got all the different templates and things down the left-hand side. You can choose between different avatars. Now, obviously, the free test version is going to be quite limited. But you'll see you can do talking photos. You can have your own custom avatars. And there's an abundance of different types of avatars inside you. You can drop text in. You can drop elements in. You can upload your own assets. You can use templates if you want to start off with something specific. For example, you could be talking about search engine optimization. Well, you could use this template or we could use a different template, for example, this one, and you can add this in and you can see you can very quickly and easily change things. You can drop in your own text script, audio script if you want to upload the file yourself, and then you have a video editor with background music and so on underneath. You can even record directly inside you if you have a good microphone to work with. So this is where a tool like HeyGen can really come into its own if you're uncomfortable on camera or you just want to have something that's nice and easy to explain how to do something this could be something you'd want to check out. Links again, as always, in the description below. Now, for more tech savvy out there, you may want to take a look at AutoGPT. Now, this is basically taking a tool like ChatGPT with that generative text and putting it on steroids. This is something you do have to install yourself on a server that you have set up, and I'll put a video link in the description so you can take a look at how that all works. But if you want to have AI running in the background doing things for you, imagine like a macro that you use AI to do, and then you can tell it to do various different things, and it will constantly be doing that based upon artificial intelligence. That's basically what AutoGPT allows you to do. Like I said, this is a little bit more advanced and I would recommend checking out that video, but I wanted to include it because this kind of opens up a lot of different possibilities. And again, I think this is the way that we're going to see some kind of forks of AI going in the future, where we have automations going on behind the scenes that we just basically set running and then we kind of leave it to the job. Next on our list, and probably one you probably have heard of, but you might not have tested, is Microsoft Designer. You can kind of think of this as Microsoft's take on something like Canva with a chunk of AI thrown in for good measure. Now, I tested this out and I wasn't 
overly impressed with it, but that was several months ago. So you can sign up for a free account to test this out and see how it all works. And I would recommend you do because it's always worth checking these tools out. But just like I say, imagine AI based Canva, which I'm sure will come even if it's not already here. And with the A, sort of like the Microsoft way of doing things. That's Microsoft Designer. It's interesting. Check it out. You might find it's kind of useful for what you're looking for. Next on the list is Grammarly Go. Now, this is something I've recently picked up myself. You can test this out on the free plan, which unfortunately I didn't know at the time. So I basically bought premium for a 12 month period. But anyway, what this is, is basically a tool like ChatGPT integrated into Grammarly. And any way you kind of use Grammarly, you can kind of use this, including its own writing assistant. So let me just quickly show you some of the simple ways you can use this. If you go ahead into your Grammarly account and create a new document, so this is kind of your writing tool, you'll see we have Grammarly Go. If we click, and what this allows you to do now is you've got a set number of prompts per month based upon the plan that you have. But you can come in and you can change the tone of voice. So you can set this up how you'll want your tone of voice in everything that you write. So this is consistent across the board for every way that you use Grammarly Go. So this is something that's a little bit different to a tool like ChatGPT. So you can see I want to be casual, neutral or formal. You want to be engaging or empathetic or witty, whatever, what language you currently sort of operate in. I am also happy with that. Like I said, that will now become the norm for your tone of voice. So you can see now underneath, we've got some basic ideas of what you may want to do, but you don't have to use these. You can click on more if you want to and get even more ideas, or you can tell us to do something. So write an outline for a blog post of seven AI tools you've probably never heard of. Inception, maybe. And I'm gonna click on return and let that go ahead and do what it needs to do. And you can see this will now give you a basic overview of whatever you ask it to do. You can insert it directly into this document or whatever you're actually using the Grammarly Go tool. So if it's an email you're writing, you're replying back to someone, or it's a tweet or something like that, you can literally hit, hit the insert and that will put it in there for you. You can trash it off, you can mark it as a, or sort of provide feedback to it. You can even rephrase it. So if you don't like it, you can hit rephrase and then that will go ahead and rephrase it for you. And then once you're happy, you can simply go ahead and click insert and that will now be inserted into this area for you. Now, the cool thing here is once you've done that, this is then going to go and use the other Grammarly tools to check the spelling, check the actual context, check the wording, the structure, all those kinds of things that you're used to. You can see correctness is looking pretty good. Engagement is very engaging and so on. But we can even then use the option for plagiarism. So we can say, let's just select all of this and let's run the plagiarism check on there. And as you can see, it comes back and tells you actually it's found 13% of this small block of text has content that it's seen from somewhere else. So it could be plagiarism. Now, obviously you need to be realistic about this. If you've got an opening sentence or part of a sentence that looks like it's taken from somewhere else, you could either very quickly reword it slightly to remove that problem, or you could actually reference that as a citation if it makes sense to do so. But you can see this gives you all the different options and you can see you can copy the reference from here if you want to. It'll show you where it's referenced it from, all those kinds of cool looking things. And you can see the next one is in 12%. It shows you exactly where it is. And we'll see the last one and you can see. So you could very easily make changes to this, update it, change the wording you want, all those kinds of things. But I like what you can do with this. Is it the best tool out there? I haven't used it enough yet to find out for definite. But if you like Grammarly and you like the way that works and you use it a lot, having the AI built into that can be pretty useful. And those are the tools that I wanted to show you today. How many of these did you actually know? Do you use any of them for yourself? Let me know in the comment section below. And as always, if you've got other tools that you'd like to recommend to me, let me know in the comment section as well. As always, all applicable links are in the description. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.